Hello everyone, hope everyone's having a good day. And today, this video is going to be my video why I started Bible journaling. And a lot of you who have followed my scripture art journal pages, I just want to thank you. My videos, I mean. <laughs> I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for interacting with me, responding to my videos that I did post. And we finish that uh, version of the Bible Scripture Art Journal page for 2015. And I have been wanting to do this video for some time now, but it was always one thing or another. I got sick in December, got well, and I think about three weeks later, I got sick again. So I couldn't do the video. So I finally want to get this video over with and I definitely want to shout out give a shout out to my dear friend Gail Lopez who literally followed me at towards the end of my Bible scripture art journal pages and she's been waiting for this video for a long time and if you see me looking down a lot guys it's because I'm going through notes because I'm bad at saying exactly what I want to say when I'm on camera or I forget to say stuff so if you see me looking down a lot it's because I'm looking at notes okay so I'm just gonna get started here why I started my Bible scripture art journal pages first I want to say that today you know I'm a stronger person I can talk about it now but last year, I couldn't really talk about it without getting emotional or sentimental about certain things that I'm going to talk with you about. And if you're not up to hearing about drugs, drama, then you can exit this video because this is what this video is going to be about. And it has to do with my son. First, in August of 2012, he tried to commit suicide. Did not succeed. Thank God for that. He was in the hospital. We don't know how many pills he literally took, but it was quite a few from what he told the paramedics. And my son... <sighs> He chose that life and he chose to live that path. We tried, and I say we, me and my daughters, we tried so much to reach out to him. But when you're a drug addict, You see life in a totally, totally different way. Um, and I swore to myself that this wouldn't happen because I am a stronger person today than I was in 2014 when everything started with him. And I'm talking about the drama the monster he became, it was just so unreal that I just couldn't believe that me as a mother would go through something like that. And I know sometimes we as mothers have to teach hard lessons to our kids. We ask them to do the right thing and they will do the opposite. We simply just have to let things be. And I did learn that along the way. It took me almost a whole year to figure out a lot of things about him. Uh, let me just go back to here. Let me just go from the beginning. I was just going a little too fast here. 
Anyways, in two, August of 2012, he tried to commit suicide. Like I said, he took I don't know how many pills. And my son had a thing for pills. And he just couldn't see his way through life without them. And, you know, it was hard to see him be that person, become that person that he became. <sighs> Anyways, they kept him in the hospital for a full 24 hours. I mean, I arrived at the hospital with my second daughter. I think it was about 10 o'clock at night, maybe, they admitted him. The next day, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he finally kind of was coming off whatever he was on, but he was still being a mean person. He was spitting at the nurses. He didn't want to be there. He was cussing everybody out, saying he didn't belong there, that it's so dumb. You know, what are we doing? It's so dumb for him to be there. And I mean, it was just blah, blah, blah. It was just so much going on. And when you live your life with drugs, you don't know right from wrong. You're not yourself. You don't know what you're doing half the time. Half the time you need somebody there to watch you. Even though he thought it was wrong, he thought it was wrong of us to watch him. Um, he didn't know what he was doing. So one, I have three daughters, a lot of you know. And I'm not going to say their names, but my youngest daughter, they lived together. I mean, they were very close. They had a house, a three-bedroom house. They both worked. They were going half on the rent. I mean, everything was great. But me as a mother, we get left out on the true things that our kids really do. No matter what you think as a mother that your kid is the best kid in the world or kids don't tell parents a lot of things that they're going through just because they don't want to burden their parents or they just don't want to say <clears throat> but we all knew that my son was on drugs because you can tell at family gatherings or you know, and he, another thing he liked to do was drink alcohol, straight alcohol with maybe Coke, sometimes just straight. That was just him. I mean, he was a enjoyable person when he was normal. <laughs> he was such a wonderful person. But when he was on drugs, he was a totally different person. And it was more like the monster came out. There was just evilness all around him. Nothing made him happy. So he lived taking drugs and he chose to do that because at that time, I guess it made him feel normal. I don't know. I never done drugs. I mean, I don't know. I read up a lot about it after everything happened and I had to learn to understand a person that was living their life on drugs. But anyway, my son failed. He didn't succeed on committing suicide although he told the paramedics just to let him die the paramedics told him they could not do that they had to take him to the hospital we were told they were going to pump his stomach which they did not do that they just connected IVs and monitored him for the first 24 hours literally that's all they did they told us they didn't do that anymore and he was in county hospital and that they did not pump uh, stomachs and we asked them if there was any way they could just keep him. He needs help. You know, he's a threat to himself. He wanted to commit suicide. He's on drugs. He needs help. But him being over the age of 18, there was nothing we could do. And they could not force him to stay. And my son just, <laughs> he just wasn't living, living a normal life. He had drugs women I mean he had three different women at one time and they all knew about each other and I had a name for other for all three of them dummy dumber 
and then stupid. I'm serious. I mean, it's sad to say that, but all three of them knew about each other. And they would all argue. They would text. They would go through his phone. It was just so much drama with these women as well. And they didn't help anything because they did drugs with him. And that was a sad thing. And he was involved with this one um, young lady. And she had kids. And my son didn't want kids. He was blunt. He said, I don't want kids. And she left her kids to be with him, locked up in a motel. And the day that he was admitted to the hospital, they had a big fight and she took off in his car and he ended up chasing her. He could have got hit by a car or anything could have happened. One of my son-in-laws went looking for him and found him and put him in the car. And that's how he was taken to the hospital because we knew that he was on something. So after all that drama we even had drama at the hospital. I didn't want that lady there. And everybody was arguing back and forth. You know, my daughters and I, not me and my daughters, literally arguing, but arguing with the girl. She was just sitting there lying about so many things. And then she lied to my son. He caught her in a lie right there at the hospital. And it was just back and forth drama. And I just thought it was better if she would just leave, you know, let us help him and let us talk to him, but she wanted to be right there to make sure that he was going to leave with her. So that was another drama, and I knew this was not going to be the last of it. I didn't know what was going to come of my son next. And so all that happened in August of you know 2014. So September, October, he was the same person on a rampage all the time calling me complaining about my daughter doing this my daughter not doing that I mean he was he hated everybody he hated his life nothing was right not, nothing was right in his eyes and he just picked 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 on my daughters for no reason they were his sisters yeah but they were the only ones there for him to pick on and fight with and complain about I mean he was a monster and I it was so hard for me to handle that, you know, with him living somewhere else and me living on my own, him living on his own. It was just hard. And then there was nights when he would call. I wouldn't even want to answer him because I didn't know what he was going to be complaining about or what he was going to be bitching about or what he was going to say. One of my daughters did to him. And then my daughters were calling me complaining about him doing this, him doing that. I mean, it was just an on and on thing. Everything we told him would just go in one ear and come out the other. There will be days when he was Bubba, you know, that's the nickname. That's what everybody grew up calling him. He's our Bubba. And he was just the nicest, sweetest man, you know, that you would want to be around with. But it had to be only when he wasn't on drugs. And he's been doing drugs. He had been doing drugs for a lot of years on his own and we were just lost for words we were just lost the way he was acting my daughter one of my daughters even called and said you know I think he just needs to go to jail already you know I'm done with him I can't deal with him no more he's gonna have to move out he's gonna have to do something so that escalated that started another fight so it was just an on ongoing thing with him and I started to pray and pray for him and wish that things could be different for him and I would even talk to him and ask him you know what is so wrong with your life you know what what is it and he would never open up to me or open up to anyone so anyway we got past that incident where he tried to commit suicide and then in November September 12th let me see, August, September, October, yeah. Three months later, he r literally went out of control, guys. And this is no lie. This is a true story. <laughs> he was on breaking news all over the TV stations. I was so shocked. Glaring at the TV, couldn't believe that was him on TV. <laughs> Stole the police cop car. Literally got in it and drove off because they were going to arrest him for trespassing. 
he was at a motel with one of his so-called girlfriends. And of course, we weren't there. We just went by what we heard. And, you know, let me go to my notes of that day. I had everything all here. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, um, he was on breaking news all, on 12 o'clock news that there was a shooting and, you know, they shot at him. They shot at the actual patrol car and they were accusing him of shooting first and blah, blah, blah. It was just a big, big story. And if you go to my very first video week of my Bible scripture art, I think it was. January 8th, 2015, and I kind I didn't say anything about the story or anything about the incident why I started Bible journaling, but I did kind of mention that when something dramatic happens in your life, you you turn you turn to seek God more. And that's what I meant. <laughs> and that's exactly what I had to do when this big ordeal happened, because to me as a mother, it was a big ordeal to me, and I just could not phantom at all why my son would do something like that. So we were all shocked, you know. I got the first call from my oldest daughter because my son had called one of the girlfriends, and one of the girlfriends called my daughter, my oldest daughter, and told her what was going on and where he was and what motel they were at and blah 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 and my daughter my oldest daughter she was just broken to pieces and that really broke my heart more than anything that he hurt his sisters and after he crashed the police patrol car he ran and there was a good Samaritan that stopped him he tackled him down and at that moment I didn't know why that had happened but as time progressed and more that I talked to God and more that I got involved in reading the Bible, I had to understand why all of this was happening. At first, I didn't understand. It took me, I would say, um, a little bit, quite a few months, maybe. Did I write that part down? Um November, December, probably about two months, I finally, finally understood why that guy was there. He was there to save him. God threw that man to hold him down, to stop him from being shot or even killed. He threw that man in his path to stop him from living the life of drugs sometimes it just takes one prayer to change everything and to me one of the hardest lessons in life is letting go rather it's guilt anger love loss or betrayal change is never easy we fight to hold on and we fight to let go I had to believe that God had another door for him. The Lord chose that good Samaritan to stop him from running for his own good. And that day was a new life start for my son. And that's the day I promised I would pray for my son for the rest of my life. Even with the biggest heartache that I had on my shoulder. And I had to learn that the more you try to control something, the more it controls you. You have to free yourself and let things take their own natural course. My son did all the bad stuff to himself because he chose 
that way. And he chose not to ask the Lord for help. Every day to him was get high, have a good time. I'll deal with life later. And look where it took him down a path of hell for his whole family as well. At times, I'm not going to lie, I became annoyed with his attitude. I mean, he acts so stupid and looks stupid all in one. He was angry all the time. And his anger was against the people who loved him. Most of the time, my youngest daughter. Words being said back and forth. And everything anybody did was wrong in his eyes. The day, the days when he would say nothing was right in his life. To me, that was, that was a totally, I hate my life. You know, he just didn't like his life. And, you know, he just never trained his mind to see something good in his life. And, you know, just, it was just so hard to deal with him in so many ways. And, you know, he writes me letters now. And, you know, I still get teary eyes reading his letters. And I still get that choked up knot in my heart. And if you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. But after everything, you know, was said and done, I knew that God was working things out for him. And I know sometimes we don't feel it. We have to learn to have faith and be thankful. We must pray to have the courage to let go of what we cannot change. And we have to decide to give it to God and rest our minds and our hearts. God's timing is perfect. Sometimes we have to just let go of what we cannot control and just trust God. God has not abandoned my son at all. He's working things out for him. Even... If I don't feel it, I will continue to have my faith in him. And I think on week, no, I think it was week nine. Our scripture was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. And a future. That week was the best scripture that I could have read. And that's the day my faith got bigger. Because I knew in my heart that's exactly what the Lord was doing for my son. <sighs> Sorry, guys. And now I get letters from him And yes, he's still It's been a year And he's been in a um, county jail For over a year now And to me That means that the Lord is still Keeping him here with us because we can still go see him. We can still go talk to him whenever we want to. We don't know exactly um, what his sentencing will be. His uh, court dates for some reason keep getting reset and reset. And we're hoping that that's a good sign for him. And, and I pray so much every day. And I ask God to please watch over him. 
change him to be a better person. And I ask God to please keep drugs out of his mouth that do not belong in his mouth. And so far, I believe that God is slowly answering my prayers. Because if you was to see him now, <sighs> he looks that he's such a better person. He's Bubba again. The sweet, wonderful man that he has always been. And writing letters to him is the hardest um, thing that I still go through. But I get it done and I get the letters mailed out and we write back and forth and it touches my heart on some of the things that he writes me and the the regretfulness in his letters mean more to me than anything and i want him to know that you know yes he has hurt his family and he has broken our family to pieces <laughs> Because without him here on holidays, nephew's birthdays, my granddaughter's birthdays, he misses out on all that. And they miss him dearly. And he is the only uncle that they have. He's the only boy. He's the only son I have. So I continue to pray for him. And I ask the dear Lord to forgive him for all the wrongs that he has done, you know. Um, and I and in most of my letters, I write him and I tell him, you know, with all of us praying, all of us praying for him and him praying for himself, God will listen. He will see our hurt. He will see our pain. That we continue to live our lives without him here. And no, my son is not dead. But. And I know nothing compares to that. When you have a family member who has to be in prison or, you know, be locked up for a certain amount of time. You still lose out on being that in that person's life. Rather you know, he's gone for su for such a long time. And we still don't know the outcome of what he's going to get. You know, we, we're still constantly praying on that. And I pray for him constantly. Every day, every single day. And this is no lie and I'm not making things up. I constantly pray for my son on a daily basis. Because I know he needs it more. I pray for my daughters as well. I pray for family. I pray for everyone. But I concentrate my prayers hard more on my son because he needs it more. And I hope everyone understands where I'm coming from. Um, why I started Bible journaling. It's because of everything that I went through with him and it's not going to be, I'm not going to say all the bad things that he's done or anything negative about him. You know, I'm not going to sit here and degrade him like that because he's still my son, but I'm doing this video just for mothers, a sister, a grandmother, anybody that's going through things in their life that nobody knows about and you know i was doing videos when all this was going on in my life you know you come on youtube and you do videos you interact with people because you consider them good friends you know 
And here on YouTube, I have made so many friends, good friends that I interact with. Not just on YouTube, on social media, I mean, we interact and it's like I know that person, you know. And I just want to bring it, put it out there that, you know, when you go through something in your life, you need to get involved in God. Because God and faith are the two things that are going to get you through this. And I told myself that I was not going to cry at all. That I was, oh, I'm a stronger person. I know I can do it. Because when all this started, that's all I did was cry every day and every night. It was bad. And some days I do feel like I'm a stronger person. I can talk about my son, talk about things that he's done, talk about things that, you know, he hasn't done or the right things he hasn't done, the bad things he's done. You know, when all this happened, everybody was calling, texting me, writing me on Facebook. I mean, I couldn't even talk about nothing without crying. Now, if somebody was to ask about him, I'm, I am a little stronger than I was back then. I could talk about it. and But back then I couldn't because it was just so hard for me, so hard for me to to really believe that he done all these bad things. And to me, it is. It's just a bad thing that he done. And, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm not I didn't tell you the whole story of, you know, the incident, everything that happened. I just don't want to put it out there. But I know you understand what I'm saying. And I know if you're a mother, you know how I feel when you have a kid. You know, when you have a kid, that's that's your life. Your kids are your life. And, you know, kids, when they're when they're little, they listen to us and they understand. And, you know, they back talk us in the back of their head. You know, we ask them to do something. But when they're grown, it's just so much harder so much harder but one thing I will say about my son he never ever disrespected me in any way no matter if he was on drugs no matter if he was mad and you know he would go on and on and you know we were I would yell at him sometimes and but he never ever disrespected me in any way and my son has a good heart he's a good person he will help anybody that needs help but now he's the one that needs help. And I wrote a letter to him that I want to read out loud. But I'm going to do that in another video. Because this video is already past 30 minutes. But getting back to why I started Bible journaling, guys. This is why. Because of everything I had went through. And I'm, I've always been a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And I had such a hard time getting through the day. Just, you know, the first couple weeks were the hardest because my son was going through withdrawals. And that was the hardest, hardest thing for my daughters to see. They couldn't understand that he wasn't crazy. They kept saying, oh, he's good. They're going to put him in a mental hospital. He's crazy. One of my daughters went to see him and. He was crumbling cookies in his hands. Cookies weren't even there. And I kept telling them he's not crazy. He's having withdrawals. It's all those pills he took. It's all the drugs. Just give him time. But they were so worried about him. They were crying all the time. They were calling me. I felt so bad for them. Because they're my heart too. But I read up on a drug being a drug addiction and I already knew that he was having withdrawals and he had to go through the phase but my daughters were assuming they were going to put him in a nut house he was crazy but I knew that he was going to be okay and I kept telling them you have to pray you have to pray for him crying and all this crying we were doing was not helping him at all you have to pray he needs prayers. He needs help. And he's been in there a year already. And he's back to himself. He's no longer on drugs. And I pray that he doesn't yearn for them while he's in there. And I hope there's no way that he can get a hold of drugs in there. Because, I mean, 
the prison system, it's bad also, you know, and I'm going to leave it at that, but I'm hoping that my son, this is a lesson learned from for him. And I hope he doesn't do anything crazy anymore. And I hope the best for him. And I hope the outcome is in his best interest. And I've already asked the Lord to please be lenient on him. He needed help. He was on drugs. That's no excuse. But I will accept whatever the good Lord decides to give him because I know it's going to be for his own good. And I've already told the Lord that, that I'm okay with whatever time he's going to be given or whatever he decides to do with him from this, from this day forward, I will accept it. And at that moment, I just decided to write a letter to him and I did. This was back in, see, this happened in November. Um, I want to say maybe like the 10th week when all this happened. And once I knew he had a clear head, once I knew his withdrawals were gone and he was himself, he could understand my letters. He could understand what I was saying. Um, I wrote him a letter and I want to read that out loud to you guys in the next video. So thanks everyone for watching. Take care. And if any of you ladies on my here on my YouTube friends, subscribers, if any of you are going through something that I have been going through, you need someone to talk to. I'm here to interact with you. I have my email address listed on the bottom of my videos. You can find me on Instagram. I'm more than happy to interact with you. Uh, if you need help understanding anything, not that I'm perfect, not that I'm an expert, but I have been through so much uh, with my son. And being around a person on drugs is not fun at all. And it's not a happy moment at all either. It's very hard to deal with a person that's a drug addict. He has to admit it to himself first for him to seek help and I hope and pray that he seeks the Lord while he's in there and from some of the letters he has written me he's written uh, he has read the Bible because he's talked to me about it and that makes my heart happy that he and I <laughs> are kind of doing the same thing together so I'm going to close this video and my next video is going to be the letter that I wrote to him. So thanks everyone for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.